This is the tier list for every single Resident Evil game that has come out. I'm very excited to get down to this because I have a lot of strong opinions for some of these games. The first Resident Evil game I actually played, my uncle had it. I did not play a lot of it. I hopped on for the first about five, 10 minutes. I got confused because the, the tank controls in the camera. I was like, man, I don't know how to do any of this. Yeah, I did not have a good time because I was just so confused on what was going on. Is that my fault? Yes. Anyways, I gotta say, this game revolutionized a lot of things. The first one is still one of the best games ever made. Yeah, I liked it. I appreciated what Capcom set out to do. I just can't get around tank controls, and that's just me being me. I'm gonna have to rate this a B. Sorry, guys. We're starting off strong right now. Resident Evil 2. Fun story. Resident Evil 2 was the first game I have ever played. I hopped on that for 30 minutes. Again, I was dazed and confused, but screw it. I had like a twink with me. You know what I'm saying? I was playing as Leon. All our, like, I remember seeing the flaming cop car and I'm like, holy shit, this is crazy. And I fell in love with it. I never beat it because, you know, I was a dumb kid. Waste all my ammo on the zombies because I didn't know what to do. But like, I had a really good time playing it. And it was a massive upgrade from what Resident Evil 1 set out and did. And you, I have to appreciate that. Even though it was still tank controls, I don't really like tank controls. I'm not a fan of that, as you guys can tell. But I liked it. Really good, solid game. The dialogue was funny. I don't think I've introduced myself yet. My name's Leon. I'm with the RPD. I'm putting Resident Evil 2 in, in the A rank. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. I remember this game. I remember playing it. Nemesis scared the shit out of me as a kid. And I remember when the movie dropped and Nemesis was the big bad of the movie. I thought that's how Nemesis, like that's Nemesis origin. Now I'm realizing the movie kind of just did its own thing with Nemesis. And I felt like an idiot when I found that out. Nemesis was a terrifying presence. You play as Jill again. You have to escape Raccoon City. And it's amazing. Like I, I kind of like how the first three Resident Evils, or at least two and three, played with the timeline in the sense of this was all happening at the same night it was a solid game this was still around the time and it was still messing around and the series was on like a hot streak it was groundbreaking and plus i think this was this was one of those games where it had multiple endings so i'm putting this in the a rank now resident evil survivor my boy if my memory serves me that should be a first person arcade game it was released in 2001 the game takes place after raccoon city got nuked to hell the helicopter crashes on the outskirts of umbrellas corporation's private township located on on Sheena Island. Yeah, you have no memory or identity. And um, yeah, unsurprisingly, the game did not do well. It's so weird how you go from RE3 being critically, like universally acclaimed to Resident Evil Survivor, which did not do well. Four out of 10, five out of 10, it, it was not good. Yeah, the shooting opts to stick with slow pacing of the rest of the series, and the result was a gun game with no gun that absolutely crawls along. What was up with the random games they had between the main series? I don't know. That's usually how it goes. Like sometimes Capcom will make a banger game, then release bullshit in between. I don't know if they're trying to satisfy investors or make a little bit of extra money. Yeah, this game did not do good. The RE universe could definitely inspire a great gun game, but with bad technology, unforgivable control limitations, and an uncanny lack of fun, this non-gun game definitely isn't it. Jesus Christ. Not a good game at all. It's $101? It's $101, bro. What the f***? Pure ass, okay? So, I'm giving this a D. Resident Evil Co Veronica. I did play this and I enjoyed it. And I was so surprised when I found out people did not like this game because this game did so many cool things with the Resident Evil genre. People were, were treating this like it was like shit. People were treating it like it was shit. Bro, they had 3D rendered backgrounds, excellent story progression, cool ass cutscenes, nice ass action, cool bosses. Story was good. The characters was fun. It established Wesker and Chris's relationship and dynamic and rivalry. Like, this Cold Veronica pioneered the Resident Evil story. It pushed it so forward, and to find out that people did not like it was so crazy to me. This game, as far as I'm concerned, like, is, is technically, like, really good, and they did everything right. I'm surprised people did not like this game. I might f*** around and give this sh an S, because I, I loved it. And I am. I'm gonna give it an S. Okay. Resident Evil Gaiden, I think that was the mobile game. If I'm mistaken, may may y'all jump in into the camera and f***ing eat my ass or some stupid shit. Oh, it was the Game Boy Color. My uncle had the Game Boy Color and he I he did play Resident Evil Gaiden. This is it's a story as old as time. I played Resident Evil Gaiden for five like solid five seconds until I got a headache. I remember that. I used to have a shit ton of Game Boys. I played Resident Evil Gaiden, but I didn't play too much of it. 
But like, as far as I know, Resident Evil Gaiden just wasn't, a lot of these spin-off games were just not that good. It was okay, but it's not like, it's nothing I was like, oh hell yeah, Resident Evil Gaiden for the blah, 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 blah. Like, it was just not that good. The puzzles was really good. Other than that, I was just like, yeah. This was at the time where Resident Evil was just releasing on every single game system. So I guess this was one of the games they put up and uh, they made Resident Evil Gaiden. I'm gonna give it a C. Cause from what I watched my uncle play it and from what I've seen, it wasn't anything groundbreaking, but it was just, it was just one of those games you turn on and just play. All right, Resident Evil Cold Veronica Survivor 2. I think that was like a, like a DLC, right? Am I stupid? Cause it did come out for the PS2. It was so random. This is what I mean. Capcom just makes spinoffs on random shit. I want to say it was first person. I'm gonna look this up. I want I want everybody to see this. First person. That's so weird. And the game is 30 minutes. What even was the point of this game? I think this is before. Is this before Antart. Like like a speedrunner Code Veronica in first person view. Literally, cause Steve is still with you. So this is when you fly off to the to the Antarctic base. Yeah, this is before Steve dies. Why is this? I've legitimately never played it before in my life. I've never played it, but uh, it just looks like a waste of time. No disrespect. Resident Evil 1, it deserves a great introduction. I, I noticed that about Capcom. They make a shit ton of games that are just weird one-off games, almost kill the series, and then they revive it with one of the greatest games ever, and then they do it again. Resident Evil 1, one of the greatest remakes. It's the remake, Resident Evil 1 remake. One of the greatest remakes ever. I, I stand by that. Everything is fucking improved. Cutscenes is improved, the voice acting, the graphics, the action sequences. Everything is improved, and it would be a sin for me to put this anything below an S. It's an S-tier fucking game, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. It's one of my favorite games that I played with the randomizer mod. I, I, I fucking enjoyed it. So, yeah. Resident Evil Zero. Okay, I have a lot of thoughts about Resident Evil Zero. Most of them are not so good, but I can see what they were trying to do. Resident Evil Zero introduced um, AI companions. They didn't really introduce it because Code Veronica still had it, but they, they refined AI companions. The ability to switch between them whenever was amazing. The map layout was pretty good. You find yourself getting lost a lot, which I did not like. I didn't really like the fact that I was just walking around with a chicken with my head cut off in Code Veronica. Gunplay was pretty cool. Graphics was good. Everything about it was cool up until once you get past the train section, it did a lot of cool things. The fact that you can't have a chest to carry shit is f***ing stupid. The inventory system is f***ing too small. You can leave stuff on the ground, which is cool, but the map system is kind of so old school Resident Evil shit that you have to remember everything you put down on the ground. Some of the key items have terrible descriptions. Some of the puzzles are f***ing ass because you have no idea what goes where. Like it's, and the save system, it's the same as the old ones. I really wish they had checkpoint systems because a lot of times, it, like some of the enemies, some of the hitboxes was just not good. Resident Evil Zero is one of those games where I feel like people said it was shit and I played it and I'm just like, okay, this is why people think it is. But it's not garbage. It's boring. Like the new things they put in do not outweigh some of the gameplay loops I did not like. Other than that, honestly, I like the interaction between Rebecca and uh, what's his face? Billy, but um, it didn't hit. So I'm gonna put it in C. Resident Evil Dead Aim. I don't think it's really first person. I played it a little bit. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the soundtrack more than I enjoyed the gameplay. The gameplay was pretty okay. The story was pretty interesting. They had a character that, that really wanted to be, I think a woman or to be his true self, which was a woman B.O.W. That was cool as fuck. I was like, holy shit, this, this game is really doing shit. And um, the main character was kind of just a well, whatever guy, you know, the scruff any man type of character. The story was pretty good. The gameplay was okay. Action was just eh. Like they, they combined the on the rails with like the regular third person Resident Evil combat system. Like some of the games in between the Resident Evil series was just whatever. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. The Dead Aim soundtrack was really good. If you have any time, listen to some of the Dead Aim soundtrack, but, and the cutscenes, the visuals in this game was pretty good. This guy's fucking head is scary though. He has a big ass fucking head, holy shit. But yeah, some features were just like, eh. So I'm gonna put it in C. I like, I appreciated what they did. All right, Umbrella Chronicles. Was this Resident Evil's first multiplayer thing? I'm not gonna lie, they knocked it out of the f park. It was so cool. Like playing online with your friends at the time was something like pretty amazing. So seeing Capcom tackle their version, their spin of a zombified MMO was amazing. The way they tackled the MMO mix, fucking amazing. Everything about it was just dope as hell. Y'all can't deny that shit. If y'all haven't played the Outbreaks, play it. I loved it. 
Um, it had its flaws, obviously. Like, some of the gameplay loops could have been a lot better. Maybe for its time, finding servers was a little bit difficult. But I'm glad the fans and the community got together to revive the servers to, you know, to help people play this game again. Because it's, like, it's fun. It's something I feel like all Resident Evil fans, new and old, should at least play at least once. I'm gonna give them both. I'm gonna give them both in the A. Now, Resident Evil 4. Fucking D. Now I'm playing. Imagine, holy shit. I'd probably get sent a fucking ear into my mail if I gave it a fucking D. This was a genre defining video game. Not only did it pioneer how third person shooters are gonna go, fucking skyrocketed some of these games that wouldn't exist. It's one of the greatest shooters games ever made. One of the greatest survival horror games ever made. Had one of the best protagonists in it, Leon S. Kennedy. Had some of the best quips, the best jokes, the best gun plays. It was amazing from the enemy variety to the fucking storytelling to the environmental design this game had it all it was fucking amazing and you know it has some quick time events in it i'm not gonna lie i'm not a fan of quick time events but for its time this shit was nice i loved it let me put this in s tier where it belongs okay umbrella chronicles umbrella chronicles is definitely the one for the wii yes playing as wesker was pretty fun i remember wesker being fucking op and i remember the smg was super op it was either the smg or the fucking shotgun and this is isn't this the mansion from re0 i'm not mistaken the umbrella chronicles was a good you know on the rails simple shooter where you had you know your high score a simple game you could just turn your brain off and just play have fun shoot around a little bit fuck around get a high score and then that's it like it was was one of those games that came out for the Wii that was just like, here, here's a game for the Wii, nigga. Like, I don't know what else to tell you. I'll give you, eh, I'm not gonna put it in. Cause C implies that it was a game you turn your brain off in. Turn head off isn't just, just beheading. A little bit, yeah. But it didn't do anything for me. I feel like D is, D is where it belongs. Now, RE5, this is such a, you know, uh, a divisive game. There's one side of people that absolutely love this game. And there's another side that think it's 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 straight away too far from survival horror to just action and i have to say i'm one of the few people that absolutely fucking loved re5 i loved re5 i replayed and beat that game like 60 70 fucking times and i mean that from the bottom of my heart i speed ran the game got the infinite rocket launcher and beat it in like an hour and like i loved this game this game was it had such good replayability. I don't think it had the best story and the gunplay was still like, man, the gunplay actually, I'm not gonna lie, the enemies are really receptive to getting the shit punched out of by Chris, getting kicked by Shevin, getting shot up. The visuals was amazing. Like the game still holds up to this day. It's like Resident Evil 4. People don't like to admit that because it's a little bit more on the action-y side, but like, yeah, Resident Evil 5 is a really fun game. I have to give this game an A. It's a really fun fucking game. You play as Chris and Sheva. The co-op system is pretty good. It's like, I feel like like people give this such a harsh review, but five was such a good game. And Chris and Wesker's rivalry, those cutscenes, those fight scenes with Wesker and Chris, y'all cannot lie. Those shits were fire. Those shits was fucking fire. Wesker was giving everybody hands. That nigga was on 10. I don't know what's up with like British niggas and like, like black leather, but them niggas be giving niggas hands, bro. And why was he British? You can't trust British people. Then we got Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles. I like this game because it set up Leon and Krauser's rivalry. And it basically gives a little bit of insight on, I strongly feel like they should make The Dark Side Chronicles. They should remake it and make it a DLC for RE4 after separate ways because it perfectly sets up what happened between them. Not everybody, not a lot of people know that Dark Side Chronicles exist. Luckily, I know, and I've played it, and I enjoyed it, and it was, it set up the story, and that, I feel like that's what matters, and I'm, I'm gonna give it a B, B, simply because it was a good game. It was good. It wasn't nothing special, but it set up the story perfectly, and that's what you want from your game. Like, it, like, it was a game that I played, I enjoyed, I'm giving it a B. Anyways, all right. Mercenaries 3D. It's simply just Mercenaries, I think, for the DS. It's literally just Mercenaries for the DS. I played it. I enjoyed it. It's whatever. It's not really nothing crazy. It's a game that you play to fill the fucking time. And I'm just going to give it a D. Revelations, really fun. Really good game. This is when they were experimenting. I can tell they were kind of in an experimental phase when it came to Revelations. Really fun story. Really fun premise. It, like, the gunplay was really good. I'm I'm thinking about it from the perspective of Revelations 2, because Revelations 2 did everything that that did, but better. So I'm gonna give Revelations a C, because the gunplay was really fun. The soundtrack was pretty dope. I, I had a good time with it. What do you guys think about Revelations? Operation Raccoon City. Okay, there are a lot of things that Operation Raccoon City did that I did not like. Operation Raccoon City fucking blew 
asshole. I might just make another fucking tier of it. That game was just not good. I might make a fucking F tier. The game was not good. It's not even worthy to be next to Survivor and Mercenaries. Did I put the Umbrella? Oh, fuck it. I'm about to put the Umbrella Chronicles in. Yeah. I had to move Umbrella Chronicles up up from c tier and i'm i still wouldn't give this game in d i wouldn't put it in d man you can deadass kill leon in this game too not a good game yeah honestly this game is just not good this basically showed us what was happening what was going to happen with six this game was a preview a sneak piece of this game was awful awfully boring but hey <laughs> better than umbrella corpse oh man we're not even there yet too jesus christ f i wanted to make f purple now we have an f tier now resident evil 6 resident evil 6 a profoundly boring game everything the game tried to set out and did it just didn't do well the gunplay is the only thing that really saved this game the gunplay was fucking amazing the action sequences was amazing everything else was just awful and it got to the point where the game was just so fucking boring you're falling asleep playing it everything else was just like oh my god the action sequences could not save this profoundly uninspired top tier garbage game it's uninteresting name me one memorable moment that happened in resident evil 6. the one memorable moment that i had that i had from playing resident evil 6 was when the fucking credits rolled this game was just not good i did not have a good time playing it even with all the dodging and the rolling and the shooting and the fucking and the farting and the coming I, it was just profoundly just nothing. It wasn't even a game you could turn on and play with your, with your brain off. It was just simply not fun. And I did not have a good time playing it. I did appreciate the multiple storylines though. That was interesting. It just didn't save it. And I'm giving this game an F. Matter of fact, I'm not gonna give it an F. I'm gonna give it a D. Cause there were some redeeming qualities. There are some games that are on this list that I am gonna give an F. So, and dog shit. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, Revelations 2. Amazing fucking story. Amazing gunplay. Barry was in it. Fucking Barry. I love Barry. I love the action sequences. The story was dope as fuck. The ending was amazing. I loved Revelations 2. It was one of the great, one of the best RE games in recent memory. I don't care what nobody says. I'm putting it in the A tier. It's, 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 it's better than RE1 and... You know, whatever this is. Umbrella Corpse. Umbrella Corpse. Ah, oh, one of the worst Resident Evil games ever. That shit was awful. Everything about it was just not good. I don't know what Capcom was doing when they sat out to make this. Gunplay was terrible. Everything about it, like it was just confusing. I don't know what game they were thinking about making when they made this game, but apparently they went to fucking they went in the dev room smoking crack. Every aspect of this game made me sad. Every single aspect. It was not a good game. And just for that, this game is gonna be dog shit. Capcom was just like, all right, we're making a terrible version of this. Let's make another one and make it worse. Capcom had the Elon Musk buying Twitter moment. Now, RE7, a genre defining game. It saved the Resident Evil franchise. RE7 had amazing first person controls, amazing gunplay, an amazing story. The atmosphere was dope as fuck. Like this game, saved the franchise in every single way and i loved it i loved it a lot there were some aspects i didn't really vibe with unskippable cutscenes, you know not a large selection of guns which is my personal thing this game saved the resident evil franchise and it's undeniably really good it introduced ethan winters i loved his character people didn't like him but i loved him i'm not going to give it an s tier simply because what they did to chris chris's face pissed me off I'm gonna give it an A, amazing game. Now, Resident Evil 2, a really, really, really good remake, really good remaster. It did everything right. The bullet sponge your enemies, I wasn't a fan of, but a lot of people loved that. The puzzles was nice, the cutscenes were nice, the new voice actors was cool. They cut out some things that people did not agree with. From my perspective, as somebody who's played this, I loved it, it was dope as fuck. This game was a solid ass remake and I loved it. So, goes in A tier. RE Resistance. And then after that remake, Capcom was like, wait, I have something shitty to make. And they made RE Resistance. RE Resistance crashed and burned. That shit was profoundly boring. I simply was not having a good time. I tried to enjoy it and it was just, it, I don't know if it wasn't for me. What do you guys think of RE Resistance? I seen what they were trying to do with it. I was just not vibing with it. They were trying to do with Survivors versus, you know, the game thing and that only works for certain games i gameplay rise it was not good on like looking for servers was awful it tried and it failed you got to give them props for doing that but it was just a nasty game nasty 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 make it vr you know what's so crazy honestly if they made this game in vr like they made an online portion of vr i would probably be more forgiving 
because it's VR. That would be that'd, that'd be a fun thing with your friends. People don't really rate VR games like that, like to that high standard, because it's still it's still experiments with virtual reality. Honestly, if they put this game in VR, it, it probably would have done a lot better, in my opinion. But as of now, it's shit. So now RE3. I had a good time playing this game, but it was way too fucking short, and I spent sixty dollars on it. The story was decent. Everything just happened, came and went. It, RE3 came and left and it was too short for me to give this a, a, a good score. I'm just, I, I'm not, I don't know. It's too short. It's just too short. It's basically the same fucking game. I liked it for what it was, but it was just, it was like three hours, like where you can beat this shit like that. Just like, you know, wow, this is $60. I have a strong opinion about game being $70. First of all, that's stupid. But I feel like if a game is under five hours or under four hours, naturally just playing through it, it does not need to be $60. And having people pay $60 for a three hour game that I can sit down and just walk through and it skips over a lot of things, skips over a lot of characterizations. A three hour game that doesn't have a powerful story, I don't really like that. You think they're working on RE4 at the same time as RE3 and that's why there's such a quality gap between four and three and four? Probably. They did have a separate team working on RE3 and I guess maybe that's one of the main factors of it being so fucking short. Other than that, like it was a fun game, but it just was just too short. But um, yeah, for that, I'm putting it in C tier. RE Village. I had so much fucking fun with RE Village. Like legitimately so much fun. One of the best sequels to the Ethan Winter Saga ever. Like RE Village was so much fucking fun. It had good replayability, good characters. Not a lot of story, this needed some work. The pacing, eh. I wish they saved Lady D for last. I don't think they knew everybody was gonna call her Bay. But fucking phenomenal. It was fucking phenomenal. I loved every second of it. The gunplay was amazing. And it was st it's still pretty scary. Those lichens are pretty fucking scary. I got, I had, oh man, I have to give it to RE Village. And this is what I mean. Ari Village is going to be S tier for me. It was a, it's fucking phenomenal game. It was a fucking phenomenal game. And I think it's up there with the likes of RE4. We got RE Verse. RE Verse came and left. Substant, like it was very low on content. Like it could have been so much fucking more. I don't know why Capcom can't get it right when it comes to these multiplayer games. How many concurrent players are playing RE Verse right now? What? There are 15 people playing this game right now. 2000 was an all time peak. Wow. Wow. That's fucking crazy, bro. That's fucking bananas. RE4 having 3,000 with 11, uh, 100,000 peak. Like a Resident Evil game made by Capcom. Like how much? Hold on. Capcom is worth 8.2 billion dollars. Capcom is one of the most popular game like gaming companies on a fucking planet. And they only have 15 motherfuckers. That's a room full of niggas. There's 15, there's 15 people playing that. That means there's the same 15 people that's literally playing against each other. Like that's fucking bananas. But yeah, RE versus just it was boring. They didn't really add too much new stuff in it. Disappointing game. And um, that's why it's going in F tier. Now, the last and final game, Resident Evil 4 Remake. Now, there are factors that I wanna go over. Where do I start? It's one of the best remakes out this year. The combat is fucking fun. Enemy variety is fucking fun. The visuals, fucking amazing. Dialogue is amazing. Ashley, fucking dope as hell. Everything about this game, you can tell that they handled with care and they really wanted to make a really good reimagining of RE4. But some of the difficulty spikes when it comes to dealing with enemies, it's not so good. Like. In my opinion, I feel like my my view was tainted because of how I went through the first playthrough. I played the first playthrough on hardcore. Hardcore as your first playthrough, I kind of fucked myself up by playing on a hardcore for the first time, which kind of annoyed me because I'm just like, damn, enemy variety is fucking annoying. The damage is fucking insane. Everything is just, I was not having a good time at a certain point. I, I, I wasn't having a good time at Military Island. Village has a higher replay value. I, I can strongly say that. I love RE4 and I love playing from start to finish but i don't imagine myself replaying the game consistently like i'd rather play village again and again before i play re4 remake again and again but i'd rather play the re4 og again and again before i play the remake again and again if that makes any sense i don't know why it has low replayability for me but i loved it this game had everything you'd want 
in a remake it was fucking amazing the boss fights was fucking dope as hell me playing I, I like this is what i think i was supposed to play this game on normal if you're new to resident evil or if you even if you played re4 the original do not play it on hardcore as your first playthrough play it or on the original play it on normal and then play it on hardcore or professional because hardcore as your first playthrough when you're still getting to know how the new things work it's not gonna work out for you but i do not recommend that at all no 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 this game resident evil 4 the remake did so so many things so much better yes i enjoyed it thoroughly i don't recommend it which is why resi with four going up on that s tier going up on that s tier now it's a good game it's a really good game this is my ranking but um yeah this is my tier list yeah that's that's the tier list of all of the resident evil games <sighs> yes hey if you wanted to see this video earlier the vod of the actual challenge seeing the process of me editing it including some of the art i put into the videos then become a youtube member today it ranges from one to ten dollars a month and each tier gives you cool perks the more you pay and to make it better i pledge to give half of my earnings from members to charity all right losers have a good one